And I would like to show you the opposite of worry, which is meditation, and taking the time to take the Word of God and mull it over. And instead of seeing, okay, worst case scenario, you can take the Word and say, what's best case scenario? It's life. Best case scenario is always life at the end of the word. So I'm going to give you uh, a couple reasons why we meditate. Um, uh, sorry, I'm so nervous. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Joshua 1.8, it says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Meditation comes with promise. Prosperous and successful in everything that you do. Okay, and Psalms 1. What scripture was that? Uh, Joshua 1, 8. All right, and then Psalms 1. Uh, Blessed is the man who, walks, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. All right, one, one more. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. It, uh, this it does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Amen. All right. So the word of God, when you meditate on it, is a seed. And you guys, if there is something that I have witnessed this year is what the seed can produce. Like if you guys are going around Big Bear and you're seeing the bazillions and bazillions of apples on every single tree, <laughs> that's harvest, you guys. One seed brought that harvest, one seed. And when you are taking time to go into the word, you're planting those seeds. And guys, that's the harvest you can reap, is abundance. The Lord says you will, everything you will do will prosper and be successful. So when you're meditating, you're taking time to uh, dissect the scripture and just allow the Holy Spirit to show you what's in that scripture. You are sending your roots, like that tree, down into the soil, the soil of the word of God, the soil of his love, the soil of everything that he has for you. You're sending your roots down. So when storms come, wind, waves, you're strong. You are a strong tree and you're planted by that water and you are getting nourishment all of the time because you are rooted in that word. All right, in Isaiah 55:10, it says, "As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering uh, the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return empty." The word, that's the Lord's promise, the word that goes out of your mouth will not return empty. Just like you see in nature, when it rains, it has to water the ground. That's what that's saying. He said it's, it's doing the, its cycle, and it waters. It has to. It cannot be stopped. So is the word that goes out of your mouth. It cannot be stopped. Uh, and then Jeremiah 1.12 says, And the Lord said this to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So there's another promise. The words that grow out of your, go out of your mouth, the, the Lord is watching. He is watching those words, and he said, I'm going to make sure that that word is fulfilled. I'm going to make sure that that word is taken care of. I'm going to make sure that you are prosperous and successful. Uh, also, uh, Hebrews 4.12 says the, the word is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, even to dividing soul and spirit. So when you are meditating, you are allowing the Lord to show you what is true. I am healed. I am prosperous. I am taken care of. And you are separating what the world is saying about you. And you are allowing the spirit to show you the truth. You are allowing the spirit something that you can grab a hold of, and you're like, that's a lie, and this is true. That's a lie, this is true, and I'm going to stand in that promise. 
Um, and the Lord brings the increase. It says the Lord brings the increase of this seed. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just meditate on the word and know that the Lord's there. Okay, so um, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. And with the same spirit of faith, we believe, and therefore we speak. So these are just foundations of why it's so important to take the time to meditate, so important to speak these words out of your mouth. Um, it renews the mind. It helps you agree with what God's saying about you. It speaks life into your situation, takes your mind off of the negative and allowing your mind to see the truth. It's uh, helping you remember your place of victory. And it's just taking the time with the Holy Spirit for him, for you and him to go on an adventure and a journey. And he opens up the pictures, like Teresa was saying, and shows you these things so that you can grab a hold of them. And he knows your personality, and he knows what speaks to you. So you're like, uh, she sees pictures and this beauty and dances and, and you know, freedom. And, and so the Lord's going to speak to her in that way. And he'll speak to you, I love art. And so he might show me stuff with art and just fun things like that. Um, all right, one more scripture, and then I'm going to demonstrate meditation for you. Not worry, but if you can worry, you can meditate. All right, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. Another promise. Okay, so uh, my favorite way to demonstrate meditation is... Um, I'll do this probably every single year, is uh, steak and soup. So you're going to go and get a, a meal from the Lord, and you're going to grab your word, and you're going to say, um, I'm going to drink this. Now unto him uh, that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, abundantly above all that we ask or imagine, according to the power that it works in us. And you're like, okay, that's awesome. Great, I'm going to go. So I just drank that. I don't know if I actually understood any of that uh, because there's a lot of big words in there. <laughs> All right, so if I am eating a steak, I have to cut it up, I have to chew it carefully, I, have to, I, wa I wanna taste it, uh, I wanna see what kind of flavor's in there, I, I wanna make sure I digest that steak well, and it starts with chewing um, and cutting it into small pieces. So uh, I'm going to read a couple translations, and then I'm just going to close my eyes, and I'm going to meditate, because you guys, meditation is a time that is special between you and the Lord. Um, that's why it's so hard to prepare for this, because I can't. I mean, I just meditate by myself, and that's, that's how you do it. Anyway, okay. I'm sorry. All right, Ephesians 3.20 is what I'm going to meditate. So it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now to him who is the exercise of it, in the exercise of his power that is at work within us is able to do infinitely beyond all our highest prayers or thoughts. Now to him who is supremely powerful to do infinitely more than anything I can ask or think in accordance with the power that operates in me. So start to make it personal. Now to him who by the action of his power within me is able to do all things far more than I can ask or think of. I'm gonna do one here real quick. And then we're gonna go for it. Sorry. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes me. God's power energizes me. God's power energizes me. God's life flows on the inside of me. And he will do infinitely more 
than I can imagine. He knows everything that I come to him with. He knows my greatest request, my every need, and he supplies it. He supplies it. He is able to do abundantly above anything that I could ask. He is so far above my imagination that the way he works things out, I couldn't even work it out if I tried. He exercises his power within me. He exercises his abundance within me. I have him on the inside of me. His life flows on the inside of me, and it says that his power works in me. His energy makes me able, and that means I am able to be a mom every single day with patience and joy. His energy allows me to have patience and joys with others and with people. I am able to go to work and be prosperous and successful. His energy is an abundant supply above anything I can ask or imagine. His supply is above anything I could ask or imagine. So when I see this bill, I can see that and I can imagine what I need. And he supplies far above, far above that bill. He can supply far above anything, anything that I could think of. My wildest imaginations, he supplies me. I can rest in his presence and in his love because he's taking care of me. All right, that is just a small way, you guys, of how you can meditate. You just take apart the scripture and you you soak it up. How much time do I have? All right, I'm going to do one more, uh, if that's okay. I have so many things. Okay. All right, if, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 5 through 9, it says that in everything you are enriched by him. In all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you become behind in no gift. I have become rich through him in every way, in eloquence and in knowledge of every sort. So fully has the message of Christ established itself in me, and now there is no gift in which I am lacking. In him I have received a wealth of all blessing, full power to speak of my faith and full insight into its meaning, all of which verifies the testimony we bore to Christ when we were with you. Thus I lack no spiritual endowment. For through my union with him I became rich in every way, alike in ability to teach and in ability to learn. I have been made rich. So fully has the message of Christ established itself in me that I come behind in no gift. Every spiritual gift I see in the Bible, I have that in me. It says that I am blessed in my knowledge and I am blessed in my understanding and I am blessed in my speaking. I am so rich because of Jesus on the inside of me, that I come behind in no gift. The gift of knowledge, the gift of healings, the gift of miracles, I have the gift of tongues, all of these things, understanding, discernment. I come behind in no gift. I have those things, and I have access to them every single day, especially in my speaking and in my understanding and in my knowledge. I have those things. You guys, you have those things. These words are your promises and and soaking them in and making them real to you so that you can face every single situation with that promise. All right, I'm going to read one more thing and then I'm done. All right, this is your, I don't know, I just want charge. Okay. All right, just close your eyes and listen to this. This is just uh, Colossians 4, 12. But this is a promise and uh, for how you can be. 
You are always and dearly loved by God. So robe yourself with the virtues of God. Since you have been divinely chosen to be holy, be merciful as you endeavor to understand others and be compassionate, showing kindness to all. Be gentle and humble, unoffendable in your patience with others. Tolerate the weakness of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus. If you find fault with someone, out, uh, with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. For love is supreme and must flow through each other. Each of these, sorry, each of these virtues, love becomes the mark of true maturity. Let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one who called you to peace as a part of his one body and always be thankful. Let the word of Christ live in you richly, flooding you with all wisdom. All right, that's, that's your promise, you guys. And then let the word of God dwell in you richly. You could even meditate just on that, but it's flooding you with wisdom. All right, I'm all done. Okay, I do have one thing. You can come up. No, come up. I have one thing that I want to announce. Um, on Monday, I am launching a morning meditation with Missy on uh, our YouTube channel. So, Woo! yeah, ta -da! Um, but uh, Mondays through Fridays, I, I'll be releasing a video, and it's only four to seven minutes long, where I just pick one scripture, and I'll meditate it. And so you guys can you look for that on Monday, and it might go until forever. I don't know. So enjoy. Thank you.